Hey guys, Cool Cheese here, and welcome to a long overdue video. I know I haven't uploaded in a while, but I wanted to make a review on the mouse that I've been using since I haven't uploaded. And so, what's that been? Around six, seven, maybe eight months at this point? I don't recall exactly, but it's kind of a good reason, I guess, that I haven't been uploading since uh, previously I was uploading some mouse reviews, and I finally settled on a mouse that I truly believe to be endgame. There's definitely some things that I think could be improved upon this mess specifically in the future, which maybe future editions I'll pick up that, but I don't really see a reason for me to pick up any other models of shapes or from even other companies, assuming that they can't get as many things right as Endgame Gear has with the OP18K. So let's get into it. So the first thing I want to go over when it comes to my OP18K is kind of going over my past preferences and why the OP1 resonates with me so heavily. So in the past, I've been a really big fan of the X2H Mini and it was my main for a while. However, I think the sharp hump in the back made it kind of unsustainable for times that I was like, let's say at the beginning when the finals launched, I was playing like eight hours a day for every single day for a while. I know it was the generate, but in playing for that much, how aggressive my grip was on this mouse made my ring finger and pinky feel pretty uncomfortable due to that more aggressive hump in the back. Do I think the aggressive hump is still awesome? I do. I just think that if you do have a super tense grip for a long period of time, it's not the most sustainable option, and it definitely had its flaws. And so even though I still do really like this mouse, I think the OP1 does that a little bit better. The other mouse that I think I've put in a lot of time in the same like size demographic is the Viper Mini. So the Viper Mini is a classic, it doesn't really need an introduction at this point. But similarly, if I was using the Viper Mini for a long period of time, specifically my ring finger up here would start to hurt a little bit, it would start to get a little sore just because of the flares that go outwards towards the front of the mouse. And so if I pull up ELO shapes real quick, I can show you exactly what I mean when it comes to how this mouse, the OP1, like solves both of those problems. So first of all, I'm going to take us to the Viper Mini. So the green, the green turquoise, whatever, that's the Viper Mini, the OP1 8K is in the yellow. And as you can see, this back hump, which I do really enjoy, is almost identical to the Viper Mini. Specifically from the bird's eye POV, it looks exactly the same. From the side view POV, once you get to this like halfway point, they definitely does start changing, but... I'm more so focusing on this rear part of it and where it makes contact with my palm. And as you can see, it's not like a clone, obviously, but it does follow very similar design principles to making this like palm contact area very comfortable. And so I really felt right at home with this back hump once I got used to the mouse. Prior to getting this mouse, I was using some bigger mice, so it took me a while to get used to the small mice again. Once I got used to it, it felt right at home due to the similarity. And if we take a look at the X2H Mini, we can see that the side profiles are nearly identical, even though this difference between where the hump height is at this section looks pretty small. You'll definitely be able to feel that. But generally, the shape profile is very similar. Also, other than being a little bit wider, the sides are very similar, where... There is curvature coming from the back towards the front, but the, at the front, the sides are very flat, which is something I didn't really know I liked, but now that I have the OP1 here specifically, I like it a lot. And if we overlay both of these, this is going to be a little scuffed, but bear with me. We can see that the back is very similar to the Viper Mini, whereas the front and general shape profile is very similar to the X2H. X2H Mini. <laughs> so many minis. But that's why I really like this mouse, because it essentially solves the problem I had with both my previous favorite mice, the X2H Mini, and that the hump back hump can be a little bit uncomfortable through long periods of use, and simultaneously the front of the Viper Mini, where the front has that same issue for me. And the OP1 solves both of those, which is fantastic. Since I got my original OP1 unit, I've gotten two more. One of them is specifically for my glass pads so that skates don't wear down when I am using glass. And the other one is a Nachos Customs, which I'll put an uh, image on screen, but it's on my mouse display behind me. I was like, hey, I'm not really looking for any more mice. And so I thought it would be fitting to get a, I guess, not really a collector's value, but like kind of a collector's value of my goat mouse. And that's where we're at. And I mean... This mouse is just absolutely incredible. The shape-wise, it does everything that I've been looking for in this kind of small profile mouse. While simultaneously having a ton of features and having top-notch performance. So if we go into performance first and foremost, 
This mouse is the greatest performing mouse on the market, period, right now. Its 8K performance rivals... Well, yeah, it rivals nothing, actually. It's better than everything in terms of motion latency and click latency. While simultaneously not having to charge it due to that 8K per hertz because it is wired. And wired is going to be a thing that people don't like. But I think for the purposes of maintaining that maximum performance, the wire does not bother me at all, especially since if we look on the side, the stress relief or the little thing that keeps the wire up is a very high, which makes it feel like it's almost wireless. Though it definitely is still, if you like try to notice it, you can definitely notice the wire. But if you're just playing games and you're locked in, you will not feel it whatsoever. Additionally, even though I do have some grips on this right now, the coding is probably the best on any mouse I have currently. The coding is fantastic. I'm more of a grip pilled person, so I like putting grips on every mouse that I do use long term. And even the clicks, the scroll wheel, the side buttons, they all feel fantastic for an out of the box experience. They don't feel like, let's say, Vaxi level of click feel, but they're definitely way better than the Logitech, the Razer, this kind of standard gaming mouse. Uh, button feel they feel good very light very spammable and when we go look at the price tag here in a second you'll understand why this is such a great deal so the op 18 k retails for 75 dollars and i think you can get it on amazon for around 80 dollars as well for what you're getting in this mouse i feel like this is pretty unmatched like sure it is wired which i think is a very genuine concern for people who cannot go back to the wire or have like low enough sensitivity that the wire does really impact gameplay but if you can get past that, or if wires don't really bother you when it comes to your mice, you're getting the best performance on the market, you're getting top tier coding clicks, everything pretty much, and it's going to last like, I don't even know, two, three, four, five, six hundred years maybe, because it is an endgame gear mouse, and endgame gear is notorious for having incredible build quality and longevity on their products. That being said, also, if you aren't really a believer in the high pulling rates, there's other options too. With their lineup, they also released the normal OP1, which is another $20 cheaper. And the only difference between this and the OP18K 8 k is the pulling rate. So you can essentially get the same mouse, great coding, great clicks, whatever, same build quality, still really good performance, not quite as good as the 8K, but it is very good. For a $50 price tag is incredible in my opinion. And if you are at all interested in the OP1 or OP18K, I very much recommend trying it, giving it a shot. Worst case scenario, you can return it, right? Or if you just want it for collection purposes, it's very affordable as well. But this mouse is like pretty much perfect for what it is. The only thing that I can realistically I guess, uh, suggest to improve on is just making a wireless version, which Endgame Gear is already doing, which should release sometime in July. At least that was the original plan. I don't know if it's delayed a bit or what we're looking like nowadays. But when that OP1 4K comes out, I'm really excited to get my hands on it. It does weigh slightly more, I think around 8 to 10 grams heavier than the OP1 8K. So I might still end up going back to my OP1 8K. But Having all of these features, having this incredible performance, wireless is going to be a experience that I am not quite prepared for, and I will be glazing the hell out of, most likely, full transparency. And so if this is any, like, I'll say it again, if you have any interest in picking up the OP1, it's so good, it cured my mouse addiction. So, that's all I'm going to say. Appreciate people hanging out, watching the video. And I guess leave a like, subscribe, whatever YouTubers say. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Take care, everyone.